today's module is probably the number one of all the ones that I've, I've talked to sales professionals through a lot of years is learning to listen. Um, and so I'm going to take you through, this is going to be one of the shorter ones, but it's one that has um, a lot of long-term meaning. And as you continue to remember this, go back and refer to this, practice this, really dial this on. Uh, they, this will absolutely have major results for you. So I don't want to oversell it, but it's one that easily 75% of the salespeople, maybe more uh, that I work with, just they just don't do well. And I'm going to point out some of the, the critical stages of this that you've got to focus on, you've got to practice and, and get it down because it will make selling, it will make closing. Let me just say it that way. It'll make closing sales so much easier for you. It'll build relationships with your, your prospects uh, to be ones that are long lasting. You'll get full understanding. You'll get cop, you'll get uh, industrial knowledge. Sarah's coming in again. She's having struggles. Um, uh, you you will absolutely benefit from this. So let's go back a little bit of a history lesson. Uh, you know, there was a time that that salespeople had to drag around a sample case, go door to door, go to location, location, show their stuff to somebody, do a pitch, and then close a sale. And of course, in today's world, when that's one that most of you aren't old enough to remember, uh, but in today's world, uh, all people have to do is a Google search and they probably know as much about your product as you do or, or they can. Um, so yeah. it's, it's, it's made it more difficult as technology has come into our lives for salespeople to demonstrate their expertise. And you may remember that I, I've talked previously about uh, empathy over expertise. And this is where those two come together. It's where if you, if you do this part right, this is where the empathy comes from. And once you get this right in the very end of, of what we we're talking about today is where you can show your expertise. Uh, it allows you to uh, establish credibility, allow you to be able to display your um uh, your expertise in the industry. And more importantly, it's, it, it allows you to be able to get in and do what you, you all want to do, which is help your clients succeed. And uh, so let's, let's get into this and let's talk about what should salespeople do. And the most simple of all of this, and again, it's, uh, you know, it's great to have a primarily female audience today because Women are naturally more adept at listening than men. Um, but, right, Kathy? <laughs> I mean, it's the truth. I'm just saying. <laughs> and, uh, poor Sarah is really having a tough time today. She's um, moved fast, even. So. And, and to that point, you know, Kathy, I mean, I saw that grin. I saw you nod <laughs> your head. Because if I'm in a, a mixed room uh, of men and women, and I say, guys, how many times has a significant woman in your life said, you never listen to me? <laughs> and, and I get that chuckle and the guys all kind of sheepishly look down because they know they're guilty of that because men are designed. And, and yeah, I'm talking about you. I too. wouldn't care, but my volume's messed up. Okay. Can you hear us okay now? Okay. Um, uh, the um, uh, men are wired to listen to just enough information to then offer a solution. Uh, they want to fix things. Very often, women want to get information so that they can, they can feel a better part of a community or be able to share things later. And uh, women are naturally more empathetic than men. Now, I'm talking in gross generalities here, but... Uh, I'm betting at some time in, in Mike and Heath's life, they've had a woman say to them, uh, you you don't listen to me. And I'm betting almost all the women on this, on this training today have said to a man in their life, you don't listen to me. Uh, and so that's just our DNA. 
Uh, this is a much tougher skill set for men to learn than it is for women uh, because of just the way, you know, men are from Mars, women are from Venus kind of approaches to things. Um, so uh, I, I say that as a, a precursor to all that. All of us, especially if we have a, a, a we want to get to a solution, we want to help people out. We have trouble listening. We want to get to the solution before we've got all the information we need to offer the most tailored, the best approach to that solution. And very often in conversations, you all know these people that they, they're, they're listening to you and all you know all they're doing is waiting on a break so they can talk. They're not really listening to you. Um, and they're, they're, you know, truly listening is a skill set that has to be uh, practice. It has to be honed. Uh, it has to be remind. You have to continue to remind yourself to work on it, uh, because the better you get at it, the better you are going to be able to get enough information to help. Regardless, of, uh, whether it's it's in sales of your product, it could be helping a friend out with a problem. Uh, it could be helping a a, a child, um, uh, you know, a community, a church to be able to get to a solution that's going to be more beneficial to them. So what is active listening? So it's a four-step process. Uh, I, you know, there's, if you go out and do research on active listening, there's tons mm -hmm. of articles on this. Uh, it's something that I got uh, very into 20 years ago. I can tell you it was a game changer, not only for me uh, and my sales teams, it was uh, for me as a business leader, as an executive in an organization, uh, once I got really good at listening rather than speaking my opinion or trying to offer solutions too soon, I was able to turn the course of things so much more effectively. So it, and, and it also has helped me in my relationships. Um, uh, it, when I say relationships with friends, relationships, and certainly with my, my the relationship I have with my spouse. So, the four-step process is truly listen. Once you feel like you and, and you're going to you're going to use probing questions, you're going to ask some pain point questions to get out all the information you need. But you're going to listen. Once you've gotten enough information, you're going to repeat that back. And I'm going to I'm going to show you how to do that today. You're going to re repeat their words back. You're going to paraphrase those back to them. You're going to confirm that you heard that correctly. And then and only then are you gonna be able to offer a solution. That is your expertise. So steps one through three, empathy, empathy, empathy. And that fourth step is expertise. But you gotta hold off until you get through these first three steps before you can reveal how you can help that for them. I'm gonna pause right there. Kathy, does that make sense to you? Yeah, I've probably shared this story a million times in my management years, but I had a friend way back when who I learned a long time ago, he would tell, some, even in meetings, somebody would say something, he would say, okay, so I think I heard you say, and then he would repeat what they said. And he did it in such an eloquent way that it was something that stuck in my mind. And, and, and you know, now I'm going to sound like a psychologist. How did that make you feel? <laughs> it's good because it felt like, okay, he's, he's, he's listening to me. Just repeat it back exactly what I said. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 an amazing um, uh, technique that, and, and again, by the way, if you've ever been to therapy, uh, it is one that they teach psychologists to make sure that they is not as a way to to sell any more of their services is to make sure that they heard whoever they're sitting across from properly, and it makes that person feel heard. So um, let's get into this a little bit more. So again, empathy before expertise. Um, too often, too often, salespeople, and we've talked about this in the past, too often salespeople get to the pitch too soon. They're too busy talking to understand the true needs. And if you're pitching on something that a prospect is not interested in, they shut their ears. You sound just like every other uncaring, unprofessional salesperson that calls them and solicits their business. It's a turnoff. It happens to me on a regular basis. Somebody that gets me on the phone and starts blabbing out 
uh, all the things they're going to do for me, marketing, legal, accounting, whatever it is. Uh, and they don't ask me what my needs are. Um, and I've gotten to the point now where I'll just cut them off and say, hey, listen, not interested and hang up the phone. I hope uh, you guys aren't experiencing that sort of thing. But um, so many salespeople, however, think that talking is selling. That talking is selling and talking is not selling. Listening is selling. Showing empathy, asking questions, getting information, gathering information as much in the way of their challenges and pain as you can possibly get. Your questions have to be designed around common pain points or challenges in your industry, your, 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 tar your, your targeted prospects. But many salespeople are, are no, no different than a dog waiting for a command. They're just waiting on something to jump in on so they can start talking and pitching and showing all the stuff they know. Prospects sense that. And they come to the conclusion very quickly. All you're there to do is sell them something. And I think we've all established early on in these trainings that we're not there to sell anybody something they don't need. We're here to fix their challenges. So the best salespeople, the top 5% of all producers, this is a skill set that they possess, that they display every single day. And I can, I can tell you in my own personal business and businesses that, the, that when I get off track from this, I blow it every time. I blow the sale every time. If I'm really good at this, if I'm really focused, which I am most of the time, I can't rush myself if I'm really focused on this. It almost always leads to a positive outcome. So the best salespeople, they forget about their script. They forget about their pitch. They forget about their own agenda. And they, and they listen to words and they, and they detect feelings. And if you happen to be lucky enough to have them on a Zoom call or a Skype call, you know, uh, and so you can watch their faces, their body language, listen to their words, listen to their emotion, emotion through the, the picture of their voices, you can understand far better the plight, what, what this, this, this prospect is going through. Because that is the main purpose of all this is understand what they're experiencing and see if RM Coco can help them out with that. It's, it's um, uh, you know, we're going to we're going to talk about the right questions to ask. We're going to we're going to uh, encourage you to probe. It's one thing to have a list of questions, but it's also very important to ask probing questions. And I can't possibly script out all the potential probing questions that a, a, a sales representative needs to have uh, in order to do that. The only way the only the only way you'll get really good at this is be curious, uh, uh, listen to your uh, to the words and the, and, the, and detect the emotions, and then be really curious. Just be curious. But the the key to all this, and it's one of our homework assignments at the end of this, is to ask pain point questions and. One of the things we're going to do later in this session today is start talking about some of the common challenges that your, your prospects, that you're already detecting, what you're already seeing, what they're experiencing, and how RM Coco can help them with that. Um, it could be questions around uh, prior experience with other providers. It could be challenges through the business. It could be delivery issues. It could be sales trends. Um, but we're going to come up with some industry related common challenges to help you get started with this if you haven't already done so. Um, the, the other critical, vital behavior is as you're asking questions, you got to have something next to you, whether it's handwritten or you're typing it into your computer or into your CRM, is you got to take notes. Those notes are going to come in very ha handy in um, uh, an upcoming step, because we're gonna need those to go back to what Kathy was just saying earlier is, let me make sure I heard you right. I think I heard you say. But the, 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 the challenge is many times, as soon as we hear a problem, we wanna solve it. You gotta hold off, you gotta, you gotta exert some patience. You wanna continue to listen.
because you don't know that you've gotten all the challenges out yet. If you start going to solving problems before you've gotten all the challenges, you run the risk of missing the big one. And that big one is very often the one that's going to get you the sale versus the smaller ones that you've detected so far. So be patient with yourself, be patient with the prospect and, and ask as many questions as time allows. And you'll get better and better and better at what questions to ask when, how to probe into those questions. This will become a, a secondary skill set. You'll be completely unconsciously competent in utilizing this skill set. But the, as you're asking questions, you don't want to respond with a solution. You want to respond with a nod or a yes or I understand or wow, I, 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 that must be tough. Acknowledge what they're saying, but don't offer a solution. You want to listen, continue to probe for a deeper understanding, uh, understanding the challenges they may be facing because you want all their issues. Don't leave anything uncovered. Number two, this is what Kathy was talking about, feedback. So once you've made your notes, you've asked a, you know, uh, an appropriate number of probing questions where you feel like you've gotten most of the, uh, of the information that you need, if not all, then you, you'll say something along the lines of, wow, I, I, I appreciate you saying all that. Let me make sure I heard you right. Refer to your notes paraphrase back what this, this, this prospective customer said to you in your words. And then in the end, confirm that you, you heard that correctly. So again, the warning too often salespeople rush to spit out another question or pitch their value before they've heard all of the information they need to hear. You need to ask clarifying questions and you need to actively listen to them. This clears the way, this clears the way for you to start positioning yourself and the value that you offer to this prospect. And then as you just, you, let me just make sure that I got this right. This is the critical step that is often overlooked. And when you, after you've paraphrased it back to them said, did I get that right? Did I hear you correctly? Did I communicate that effectively? And when you do, your prospect's going to say, yes. Now, here's what happens when I, that prospect says, yes, you've got it. You've now removed the barrier of trust. You're on the same plane. You're on the same page. You've shown that you care. And studies have found that when it, at prospects feel that if we, we surround ourselves or we're associated with people who think and feel like they do, we trust them. And again, back to removing the barrier of trust, this effectively eliminates any barriers to trust because you've shown how much you care, the empathy part again. Once you become really good at this step in the process, and again, this is the one that is very often missed or skipped or rushed through. Once you get really good at this, your close rates are going to soar. It is amazing how this works. So let me just give you a quick example. And, and Heath, I'm going, to, I'm going to drag you into this in a minute. And anybody else that may have had some experience with this is a um, uh, salesperson. I, I understand your current goal. This is just a little bit of a, a narrative. Yeah, okay, Mr. or Ms. Prospect. I understand your current goal is A, uh, and in order to achieve your goal, you need to implement plan B, and that didn't work last year despite your efforts. Uh, we also discussed how plan F, a component, uh, a component of our solution, might be able to help you. Let me, I'll get to that later. Um, and we went through some other aspects of plan F and so on. So you're just paraphrasing what you heard. And then the prospect says, yeah, you got it. Uh, thank you. Um, and you either move to the next step or you schedule the next meeting where you offer a solution. So confirm it. Thanks for sharing all that. 
but I have some ideas I think can, can help you. We can either talk about those now if we're running out of time. We might want to schedule a meeting later. What do you want to do? Then and only then can you show expertise. The optimum way to do this is have them so enraptured with you at this point that this 30-minute this phone call, they're more than willing to allow this to go to an hour or longer for you to offer these solutions. So, Heath, let me, uh, let me uh, jump over to you for a second. He said um, help for a second, Vaughn. Hang oh, on. he did. Okay, I didn't have my... Um, my screen on. So Kathy, how have you utilized this process in the past and what kind of experience have you had with it? Um, well, um, for me, um, it's exactly what you just said. They trust you. Um, they trust then your, um, not only your feedback, but your, um, that, that sales pitch, I guess is a good way to say it. They trust that you're giving them accurate information that's reliable that they can count on. And to the point, you're only talking about what they they need, not about right. things they don't need. Right. That's a key distinction. When you start offering uh, products or solutions they didn't bring up, they stop listening to you. Exactly. Because that's when you showed you weren't listening to them. It's human nature. Right. Um, so thank you for that. So. You know, I, I've got a, a good friend who has a very successful uh, sales assessment business. It's ultra expensive, but he's one of the experts in, in helping companies hire um, sales professionals. Uh, Dave Curlin is his name. And Dave talks about the inoffensive close. And that is that the inoffensive close is just a natural uh, occurring step to getting their business. You don't have to have any tricks. You don't have to have any tactics. But if you do all this right, they're going to want to do business with you. They're going to give you their business without any pressure on you. It, it lowers, again, that, that difficulty, that, tr that lack of trust uh, uh, puts in front of you in making a sale. The inoffensive close, if you've done all of these things right, it's so easy. This, it just naturally flows to a sale because when somebody believes they understand your issues, they want your help. They want your expertise. They want to be able to utilize you uh, because you've built credibility. So empathy, 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 and then they want your expertise. But you got to practice active, active listening all day, every day. And if you find yourself, your mind starting to wander, uh, and th again, this takes a skill set. If you're thinking about the next thing to say or the next question to ask, uh, if uh, how you're going to respond to that, uh, yes, you, you need to be making notes. Uh, there's going to be in the back of your mind a little bit of formulation taking place of what you're going to do, but as much of the capacity you can of your brain to be focused on actually listening to what your prospect's saying, if you start wandering, picture a big red stop sign. Stop where you're going and get yourself recentered into listening to your prospect. And if you have questions predetermined, and you have them easily accessible on a form or a pad close to you, that relaxes your mind a little bit. It gives your mind the, 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 the additional capacity to listen because I don't have to worry about the next question. I've already got it determined. All I have to do is glance at it and ask it. Does that make sense, Kathy? Yeah, um, I have a good example of somebody who used to work for me. She was struggling with calls and it was technical difficult. It was like software, engineering software. So it gets very technical, right? And she would be trying to think of the next question. And she was like, come to me, like, I'm just suffering. I can't figure out the next question. I go, you know why? Because you just need to shut up and listen to them. Just shut up and listen. They're saying something you probably don't understand, right? I mean, she laughed it off. She's like, you're right. I, I do need to shut. I just need to listen and take notes and try to understand because I don't understand engineering. So, <laughs> so yeah, just 
<laughs> we used I, to laugh about it. Just shut up and listen. <laughs> well, and, and Kathy, thank you for giving me permission to say those words. <laughs> now I can say them because that's really what you need to do is just shut the hell up and listen. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and you just also brought up an exceptional point, especially if you're newer to this industry or newer to understanding these prospects. Now you're gaining expertise by listening to them. You're learning off of their responses that you can, that is going to continue to snowball in your level of expertise that you can, you can build and utilize on future prospects. Just like you said to your, your salesperson, if you'll just shut up and listen, you'll learn something, right, Kathy? Works. It works. It works. Um, uh, so here's what we're going to talk about today. Uh, and I want to do a little bit of a group discussion, but this is going to require probably a meeting or two or three to really dial these in, Kathy, later on and Heath. Um, we want to create a list of pain point questions, the common challenges that you're hearing from your prospects. Um, we want to collaborate. We want to meet and discuss on, on which ones we feel like are the most important. Create a list, and I sent you over a little bit of a form this morning that you can list those on, or you can just list them out as bullet points. However, uh, Kathy, you decide you, you, you are you going to ask your team to utilize this list, but predetermine the list until the competency level is built to where you've got them memorized. So decide on the list you want. Print it. Keep it next to your desk. Use it as a form that you can make notes on. That's always my, uh, my suggestion. You guys are going to do it however it's going to work best for you. Uh, read it as a reminder, not a script. You don't want to be robotic, of course. Make notes on it. And in the end, uh, whatever notes you take, make sure you capture those in your CRM for future reference. Kathy, you, you comfortable with this, this homework assignment? Yeah, I'm going to actually pick on one of these guys for a minute. So I've been sitting with them this week, and um, I was sitting with Sarah yesterday. Um, Sarah has done a good job. She's got a Word document that's got a list of questions in it. So every time she talks to somebody, she thinks of another question that came up for somebody. She adds it to her list. So your list is getting pretty long, right, Sarah? Are there two or three pages? Yeah. Wow. Okay. <laughs> And, and Sarah, let's let's just start with you, um, uh, since Kathy Volland told you, um, what are some of those questions? What are some of the questions that are that you're finding are getting the best responses? Uh, a lot of people are complaining about our competitors like availability for fabric. So a lot of their things are being discontinued. So basically. I guess directing the pinpoint to that situation to be like, well, we actually have a lot of exclusive fabrics that are available and active to, and I can send you that list. And basically that's a really big pinpoint that I've come across and that that's one that I constantly ask new people. Cause that's one thing that you don't want to obviously hit on all the time, but I try my best to get those out there and get as much information from them about that. Cause that's one I definitely hear about all the, all the time. Okay. So um, uh, availability of product. Um, so because they, they've got a job and they need to get it done now, right? Correct. There's a sense of urgency and without, without the fabric, uh, without the material, it's going to slow them down, make their, their client mad, uh, uh, and create issues, right? Yes, sir. Okay. What other questions are you asking that you're finding are very common pain points? Uh, some of them are workroom related due to the fact that, you know, their workroom that they're currently using is like eight to 10 weeks out. That's another one that's really common. And I mean, it, you'd hate to hear that because, you know, they're trying to get their work done as much as fast as possible. Um, so then I mentioned that we're, you know, four to six or six to eight. So we're a little bit faster. That's another one that I find common. Um, I'm trying to think my list is in my head somewhat. <laughs> but I'm not in front of my computer to give you the whole list. So, yeah. yeah okay. So um, uh, who else has some questions that they're, that they know or, or can identify, let me rephrase that. 
who else has some pain points or some challenges that they're finding in their phone calls that are very common? How about you, Leslie? You finding any common challenges out there? <laughs> well, it's funny because um, I guess I have really happy, wonderful clients, so I don't <laughs> typically get a ton of complaints, but also maybe I'm not listening completely perfectly. But um, I would say that um, for me, when I'm asking them about um, their workroom and what they're needing, um, they're always saying, well, I use so-and-so company because they're cheaper, or I use so-and-so company because they have more of whatever fabric that I need. So I'm finding challenges with trying to not necessarily right away answer those questions with our product, but how to compete with cheaper and more available or more patterns, I guess. So um, you're, you're, what you're hearing are objections, mm -hmm. right? And I can tell you that as you, as you discipline yourself to ask more questions, um, uh, these, these, these objections tend to dissipate. You'll hear them less. And we're going to practice this a little bit. So you'll kind of see how that flows. Um, and so there, what, what I hear from you, see, I'm, I'm actually listening. Um, you're, you're facing a lot of lower price, more availability. Uh, they're pretty happy. So what do I need you for? Exactly. Great. And so um, let me go back to a previous training session, uh, which was on building value and uh, competitive differences, right? Um, and we're not going to talk about that now, but that's, that's where you need to be very, very, um, uh, you need to have an expert level to be able to draw back on that, if it makes sense. Now, at the end of the day, too, Leslie, I just got to say this, and you know, Heath or Kathy may uh, fire a rock at my head. Uh, some people don't need us, right? Uh, they just don't need us. And if they're happy with what they're doing and everything's beautiful and rosy, then move on. Let's go find some other people that do need us. Uh, I know out of the 18 million uh, uh, designers that are out there, uh, that's a little bit of an exaggeration, but the, of the thousands and thousands that are out there, there's plenty you're going to need us. Uh, there's plenty that are facing challenges. So um, it's just finding those. And if we're spending too much time on the ones that don't need us, we can't get to the ones who do. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. How about you, Grace? Are you finding any, uh, uh, any common challenges that you're hearing uh, um, about from your prospects? Um, I guess it's more just like the workroom, like Sarah said, is a big thing is it's either taking a while. So I kind of go for like more of like the gossipy approach where I talk bad about like, oh my gosh, I've been hearing other workrooms take forever. And then they're like, oh my gosh. And then they start blurting out the names of other ones. And we're talking kind of like bad about it for a minute. I'm like, well, we have one. And then we kind of like hate it together for a minute. And then <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like high school not drama. <laughs> not a bad approach. Okay. So you're, you're building a connection with them. Right. That's what I, I, that's what I'm hearing you saying. You're 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 finding where there's some there's some common um, uh, 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 yeah. distaste. Uh, you're commensurating with them. Uh, you're you're sharing and bonding with them over that that particular uh, dilemma and then moving on from there. Get that right. Mm -hmm. OK. All right. Cool. Um, and then um, Sheila. Uh, what are some of the common challenges you're hearing? We're on, Sheila. Sheila, we still can't hear you. No, I can hear you, but they can't. <laughs> but you hear her in a different way. Right. No. I, I, I'm not sure how to help you. Um. Oh, hold on. Grace is coming. I love technology. But there you go. There you hey. go. Can you there hear me now? Go. Yes. 
Right. Yeah. Yes. So this is weird today. In the boxes up here, I'm on here twice. Yes, you are. So one of the boxes I had video and the other box I had audio, <laughs> but it was working. <laughs> but now you're all in one box uh, and all the things are working. Okay. Uh, yeah. So some of the common challenges. So I didn't want to take the other one off because I'd lose my audio. I'll leave it. Leave it. It's it, it, whatever the workarounds are, are going to uh, make it happen. So uh, what are some of the common challenges you're hearing out there? Okay. Um, I'm going to try to answer this question, but I'm actually hearing everything twice now. And there's a few seconds in between. <laughs> so. Well, that, that may be because of the other <laughs> Sheila on here. Yeah. I need to get rid of that one. So, but what I typically hear from people a lot is um, unavailable fabrics, back-ordered fabrics. So I talk to them about us having stock the size of our workroom or the size of our inventory, and then and, and that they can go online and check the availability of fabrics at their touch of their fingers, or they can contact me if that's not good for them. Okay. Very good. So it's, it's really coming down to a, a, a two or three really common things. Um, there's, there's somebody else on here that your name is showing up as four, three, five, it's nine, me. Six. it's Carol. Carol. That's what I thought. Okay. <laughs> um, and then, so Carol, are, what are you hearing in, in your conversations? Um, the same challenges everybody else has mentioned. And I still feel like I'm, contacting I'm in, still in the process of contacting my customers and introducing myself I'm a few weeks behind the rest of these guys so I feel like I'm still um, in that process of letting them know I'm here and then um, I set up a discovery call with them and then I have a list of questions that I go through and ask them um, to just get an idea of what what they're doing and what they need from us so share some of those discovery questions. I'm, I'd, I'd love to hear those. Well, um, I can look up their last order, what the last thing is they ordered. And I can, I guess I first start off and ask them how their how is business right now? And um, almost all of them have said they're so busy, they can't, you know, keep up. So, um, and then I can look up their last order and, and I can talk about that. They, are they like the fabric or what are they doing with it? Um, I ask them what type of projects do they specialize in? Some are more hard window treatments. Maybe they, I'm hearing a lot of people aren't doing a lot of drapes. So we talk about that. Um, are they up to date on their sample books? Um, usually that's a no. They haven't had a rep for a while. So they all tell me they're really glad I call because they want those sample books updated. That's a big, that's a big touch point with them right now for my customers. They're like, Oh no, I'm so glad you called because nobody's coming to pull those anymore. So um, right. I think right there, I become sort of a resource for them because I'm going to help them do something. Yeah. So that seems to go really well. Um, then I ask them if they have their own work room um, if they, you know, and then I, if they don't know we have one, then, you know, we'll talk about that. Um, do, are they comfortable on our website? Do they know how to use it? Um, just stuff like that. Um, Carol, I'm, I'm going to go off track just a minute. Sure. What did you do before you joined RM Coco? I worked at, years ago. I worked with Kathy at the St. Louis Post-Dispatch selling advertising. And then more recently, I was working for a um, uh, place that sold video surveillance cameras. It was very technical. I didn't like it. <laughs> so here I am. But it's a big business. Yeah. Uh, yeah, very big business. So, um, Carol, you, you damn near nailed what I, 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 I need the whole team to be doing with the questions oh. you're asking. So uh, great job with that. Thank you. And the reason why I asked, what did you do before? Who taught you to ask those discovery questions? Um, years ago, I went through um, a week-long uh, consultative selling 
um, and I got certified, went through a training, yep. and it completely changed my um, sales career because I was so worried. I thought selling was talking, and I was so worried about doing that. And when I realized that all I had to do was listen, it took so much pressure off of me <laughs> because they lead the conversation. I just ask questions. So it's yeah. a big, it's a big, if you can, if you can make that click in your head, it's career changing, life changing. <laughs> well, and so I didn't oversell it early, did I? No. Uh, this really does make a huge difference. I, and, and so I'm going to tell my own personal journey around learning this. And that, Heath, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm interested in learning some things from you. I, back in the 80s, um, I uh, was selling yachts. I was selling boats. I was selling all kinds of boats. It was primarily a yacht dealership for Sea Ray. It was the largest volume Sea Ray dealership in the world. And if you guys are familiar with boats, Sea Ray is one of the uh, most popular brands out there. Built a great boat. And I had bought a Sea Ray. The company I was working for had gone bankrupt. I didn't have a job. I said, hell, I'll go sell boats. And I was selling shoes, wholesale shoes. And I went to boats. Uh, uh, the owner there knew me, liked me, hired me. And as part of Sea Ray sales training, they send you a way to learn how to build a boat. Uh, they send you to a factory. But then they put you through a, a similar training that Carol just described is it's a consultating selling approach. And I'll, I'll never forget that 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 sales training was a Thursday and Friday. They made us practice and ask these questions and ask these questions and ask, you, ask these questions to understand exactly how this, uh, uh, this customer is going to use their boat, uh, how often they're going to use their boat, how many people are in their family, all, all the discovery questions. So I flew back home on a Friday night from Knoxville, Tennessee, back to Sarasota, Florida. Uh, Saturday morning, I'm all geared up. I've got all this great new training. Um, I've got my list of questions. I worked on the plane to make sure I had all this down. Saturday morning, we opened at 10 o'clock. I was, I was, I was going to get the first customer that day. This couple walks in, 10.05. I sit them down in the office, and I'd never sold a boat before. Uh, it, was, it was my really my first day. I did exactly what C. Ray taught me. I asked all these questions. I got to the end of what I'm talking about right now and said, hey, I think I've got a couple of options for you. Let me go show them to you. And I walked them out. I showed them a, a, a 30 foot and a 34 foot C. Ray. Uh, we have to have the colors because that was important for them uh, uh, to, to have in stock took them for a, what's called a sea trial or a test drive, came back and sold it in an hour, <laughs> right? And the other salespeople had been there for 10, 15, 20 years or watching me walk through after selling a, a boat on my first day to the first customer and say, who is this guy? And like I was some, some, some freak of nature. And I, can, and I can tell you, all I did was follow this process right here and in 60, really 90 days, I was the number one salespeople out of every C Ray dealership in the country. But all I did was, I'm, I'm so stupid, you know, I'm, I am, you know, I've got a North Carolina public education, so I'm not real smart. <laughs> um, and so if anybody else is from North Carolina, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but um, uh, all I did was exactly what I'm telling you today. And it wasn't some special skill set. I just followed the process and the process worked. So Carol, thank you for sharing that so I could share my stupid story. <laughs> and because, I, you know, here, here's two people that know that it works because it is a game changer. But you have to dial it in. You have to do it in the right order. Right, Carol? And with the right questions. And then the sale happens. So, um Thank you so much for allowing me to go off on a little bit of a tangent. Um, but Heath, let me get over to you. You've been in this business longer than I think anybody on this call today, right? Um, they, they've named some of the challenges that they've, they've experienced. Are there others that haven't come up that you, you know through all your experience that we should be probing into? 
No, actually, the, the key ones that they're going to hear, which they've all figured it out by now, is going to be uh, product availability. It, you know, do you have it in stock and can, can, can you get it to me quickly? So um, back orders is another issue, you know, experiencing a high rate of back orders with one company over the other. Uh, of course, we try to help them with that by seeing if we can cross-reference that same pattern that they're buying from someone else. We could possibly have that same open stock fabric. If not, we can find an alternative. The other one is lead times with workrooms. So, you know, a lot of local workrooms can be six, eight, 10, 12 weeks out. Whereas, you know, we focus on a shorter lead time, which means better customer satisfaction for their clients. It means uh, a faster uh, a cash turn in their business because they get the product, they can get it installed, they can get it paid. So you have the cash conversion cycle there. So those are the big ones. Lead times, um, back orders, discontinued fabrics, not having their books up to date um, are, the, are the key ones. Very good. Thanks for that. Uh, he, so, Kathy, with your permission, um, I, I would like to turn the next 20 minutes or so over to you. And you lead the team on coming up with a, a list of discovery questions that are a combination of, of what we've already shared this morning. You know, Carol obviously has, has dialed some in. Uh, Leslie's got some. Sarah's working on hers. But I'd, I'd love to be able to get the team on a similar, if not the same page, on having a, a list of questions that they should be asking before they ever start talking about solutions. So uh, you, are you comfortable leading that discussion for a few minutes? Uh, sure. Okay. So I'm turning it over to you, ma'am. All right. Okay, guys. So let's, um, let's just start. Who's got one out there um, that's working well? A co maybe a common one or one that you use often? If they have a workroom or not and what their lead time is. So do you have a workroom? <laughs> yes. Okay. I've been asking um, if they do soft window treatments and what percentage. <laughs> I got laughed at the last time I asked that. She's why? Like, why does that? She goes, why does that matter? And I go, well, <laughs> we have a lot of wonderful drapery fabrics. <laughs> so anyway, it was just interesting. That's <laughs> weird. She would laugh at that. Yeah. Huh. What else, guys? Carol, you got one, I'm sure. Um, I like to ask them if they use our website, if they're familiar with it. Okay. I like to ask if what their trends are that they're seeing that their customers are gravitating towards. If it's a textile content, like linens are huge, mostly in my area. Color, net neutrals, that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, I like that one, Leslie, because um, I was waiting for Carol to say something about California because yeah. she has a unique <laughs> area. Sorry, Vaughn. But wait, wait, wait. <laughs> we're, we're a bunch of socialist weirdos out here. So. Yeah, we, we've, <laughs> I think Carol has figured that out. So. Yeah. <laughs> Leslie, what was your question? What? Her question was, what are your trends in your, like, in your area? What are the trends for your... I mean, that's a, good, that's a great question because we've talked amongst ourselves and my customers want something completely different than like Leslie's customers because it's a different part of the country. Right, right. So I know, what, I know what to send my customers or talk to them about because that's what they want. Right. I'll great. bring yeah. up hardware oh. and ahead, if, if hardware. they're aware that we have hardware because some people get so focused on the fact that we're fabric, they totally forget that we have hardware. Yeah, I, um, I like that philosophy because sometimes it's not necessarily, it's really just educating them, right, to let them know that we have it. So mm -hmm. um, that's a good one, too. Grace, you got one? Or Sarah? Okay. Um, probably what, <laughs> um, like, fabric material they work with the most, if that makes sense, like polyester. Cause some people are like, oh, my gosh, I can't get enough of linen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Did somebody say, like, I like to ask them, what's their specialty? Like, what do they seem, what do they feel like they're doing that's, like, the, their trademark or whatever that, that kind of gets them talking? Yeah, I like that one because that also narrows it down to where you're not talking about something that is they don't care about. Right. One common thing that I hear so often that I'm 
don't know what a solution would be is that they're so busy that they don't have time really to talk to me. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And so like Mm -hmm. I have several target customers who literally I have not been able to get on the phone more than one or two minutes or even just by email saying, I am so busy. I do not have time to talk to you right now. Mm -hmm. I hear that too. So what's a good discovery for that one um, that you can get in a minute, um, maybe Leslie or... How are you? No, I'm just kidding. I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) How are you dealing with this? Do you have help? Yeah. Can you, could you ask for someone else that has a little more time to talk to so that they can get the information down for you? Well, typically it's a, it's a single person like this Kelly's drape designer drapery. She's amazing. And she does it herself. She's all by herself. So she is busy, you know, what about asking her, what is the one thing I could do? That would oh, help. help Carol, help you're the you. smartest. Oh, no. Yeah, I'm that would help. Smartest. I love that one. That would help yeah. you alleviate, alleviate some of your crazy business. What could stuff. I do for you that would, yeah, help you? Save time or something like that. Or you could even talk about the panel program, about how, mm-hmm. yeah, how you can make it easy for them, the ordering, or how you can save them money. You know, would you be interested mm-hmm. in hearing how we can possibly save you some money and increase your turnaround time on <laughs> drapery panels? Right. I have offered that to several people who are busy. I said, well, you know, let us make your simple drapery to, to get your cash flow going and you, you mm-hmm. handle the artistry on the, on the more ornate jobs. Yeah, very nice. Yeah, or, or maybe, you know, what sucks up your time? What, what, uh, you know, you're so busy. What's sucking up your time? That, that there's another way to tell you what you can help them with even. Yeah, good. that's a good one too. Any more, guys? Good conversation. I've noticed that some of the customers will tell me that they're very busy, but then when I do finally get them pinned down to a discovery call and we're talking, I might be on the phone with them for 30 minutes. And they tell they spend 15 minutes of it telling me about the history of their business and how when they started and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so when, I mean, they really want to talk about themselves. Oh, in yeah. their business, their story. <laughs> and so, um, you know, maybe asking them right off the bat, how long have you been doing this? You know, how did you get in this business? You know, what have you noticed through the years? They like to, they like to tell you. Yeah, I think those are, those are good points. I think people either like to talk to them about themselves or they like to complain about something that's not working. So if you yeah. can get them talking about either one of those two things, you've probably got their, their attention a little mm-hmm. bit. I feel like everyone has hit a lot of the points that I always talk about or talk with people about. I don't have too many. I, I have one that I've heard no one say anything. <gasps> Who are you? Maybe you didn't. I just wasn't listening. I mean, that would be oh, oh yeah. Filling this whole uh, training session. Uh, who are you using for fabrics? Who's your main mm-hmm. vendor? Why are you using the main vendors? What do they do well that makes you go to their line all the time? Right. Is there a vendor that maybe you're not happy with? So a lot of times when people tell you that, well, you know, we're happy, we don't need to make any changes. I've said, well, certainly there has to be somebody that maybe is underperforming and maybe we could replace them. Um, is there anybody that you're having issues with? And they, and they are, if they'll take the time to be honest with you. Uh, so yeah, fabrics, what fabrics are you using? What types of fabrics are you using? What price points of fabrics are you using? Is there a color palette that you tend to find yourself going to more than others? Do you like to use exclusives or open stocks? I think I can't public. write that fast. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll give I can't you even write that fast. And you can just take the same thing and you do it with mm. hardware. You know, who are you using for your decorative hardware resource? Do you tend to sell more higher end uh, furniture on the window type decorative hardware? Or are you selling more value price points? What price ranges do you finally tip, uh, you find yourself typically selling decorative hardware? Are you selling modern versus traditional? Do you like to do motorization? I had a, con- I had a call the other day similar to that conversation that you just set up. She said she was happy with her vendor, so then I asked her who she was using. Unfortunately, it was Kravit, which is always a fun one to hear about. At least in my area, right. <laughs> but 
And so basically I, said, I asked her, I was like, well, was there something that you don't like about that? You know, about them? Is there something that you are having an issue with right now? And she basically wouldn't tell me until the very end when I said, well, I'm glad that you gave me a little insight on one of our competitors, but I just want to you know, double check and ask, is there anything that I can do that they are not helping you do or helping you with? And then it finally came out, I was like, oh, well, yeah, their, their lead time is really, really low, like really, really far out. Is there, what is your lead time? So it's just getting the list, like you said, listening to them, making sure that yeah. you're pushing it. I push a little probably too much at the very end of every conversation sometimes, because I really want to know what it is. Sometimes you just can't get it out of them, you know, or they're like, like what uh, Leslie is saying or what Carol is saying is that they're just too busy to talk to you. So in the very end, I try my best to still get that last pinpoint that they're or pain point that they're trying to get across. And I'm sure Vaughn's going to get, go to the next step, but you know, a lot of those, um, and the, and, and I told Vaughn before my favorite consultant style method is the spin selling. So as Vaughn was saying, the whole premise of that, if you ask the right questions, the customer will eventually sell themselves on the solution. So spin selling situational questions are your, just situations. Who are you using? What vendor do you use? And then you move into the, the problems. You know, what problems are you having? If they're out eight weeks, what problems does that cause for your business? Then you have the implication, the need payoff, and you just kind of work your way through that process. So I'm sure Vaughn's going to give us something similar to that, I hope, today for you. Well, you know, I, I think uh, we're building the framework to get there, Heath. And so what, what I... I I think collaboratively what, collaboratively what we need to do is continue to create these questions, agree to these questions, more importantly, start using these questions, see which ones, like you've all mentioned today, ring a bell, that they, they get somebody talking. Uh, the, the challenge is, is from, from prospect to prospect, I don't know which one's going to get them talking. Right. Right. It could be as easy as how's business. Uh, it could be, you know, how long you've been in business. It could be, tell me about your business. Or it could be, who are you currently doing? Uh, uh, who's your current provider? Uh, how you like them? And you know, it's amazing. And let me just tell you about human nature for a second. Uh, we, we as business owners, we as people in general, stay in bad relationships or in bad situations for very long times because we just don't want to make a change. In we're, our comfort zone. Yes, we're in our, and we've, we've made discomfort comfortable because mm -hmm. it's what we've, we've, we've embraced and we're, we're used to. And humans mm -hmm. by nature are resistant to change, uh, most of us. And so uh, we like our routines and even that routine is flawed. It's the routine we know, it's the devil, devil we know versus uh, the, the one we, we, we don't. So uh, again, uh, like, like he said, Kathy said, it, uh, Carol said, if, if you get them talking, you're going to, you're going to get to the point where you say, ah, I got him now. Uh, I, I know how to help this person. Uh, and when you offer that solution of your workroom or your availability of prep fabrics or your, or your website, uh, or your, your hardware solutions, you know, all the customization that you guys do, then you've opened the door. Now let's talk, let's, let's do this as a practice, Kathy. Um, uh, let's pick three of those questions that you've been writing down okay. and I'll let you pick them and just, okay. Just let everybody know what they are. Okay. Um, so let's do the, um, um, I like that. What are your trends in your area? Okay. Um, what's your specialty? Specialty. Um, and who, um, we'll pick on one of Heath. Who are you using for fabrics currently? Okay. And um, let's, let's go back now and, and let's talk about trends. When we ask about trends, what are we looking for from our own value proposition? What kind of response are we looking for that potentially we could, could help this person out with? Well, I guess it could come down to um, 
not necessarily like the fabric type, like a, lin a linen or a poly blend or strict polyester. It could be something like a pattern or a solid, but then like if they say solid, then you can say, well, would you want texture? Do you want more like a tough, like a tougher weave pattern on it? Like what type of thing like that? So you get, I guess you could go somewhere like that. Okay. Was that the right way to answer that? <laughs> it, it, it's, 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 what I'm looking for is ways we can probe. And I think that's, that's definitely one way. Absolutely. Here. Yeah. So that those those are spot on. How else, what else? Right there, really, they really want patterns. So that's one thing that always answers that question. That's the answer I get every time. Usually, I want more patterns, 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 patterns. So okay, <laughs> all right. Um, uh, anything else that would be a, an appropriate probe into trends? Are your customers more simple? There are they more ornate? Bigger? Do they? Right. Do they like, um, you know, multiple layers? Do they like light and airy? I mean, there's a lot of ways to go with fashion, fashion trends in the industry. Yeah. Do they even do window treatments? Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or do they mostly do upholstery? Right. Yeah. Good questions. Those are uh, discovery qualifying kind of questions. Absolutely. So let's go to the next one, which is what's their specialty? Uh, what, what, what do we want to learn there that we might be able to help them out with? What are some probing questions there? Just like, um, I just asked um, who is their target client? Target. You know, okay. um, and then it kind of gets into the trends of what their clients are using, what they're asking for, what kind of homes they have, whether they're residential or commercial, all those factors. Okay. I, t I talked to a customer yesterday. It was in Palm Desert, California, and, it's very hot there and sunny. He said he doesn't do a lot of drapes. It's a lot of hard window treatments and, and solar shades. They're trying to keep the sun and the heat out. But then that led me to ask him or tell him about our new um, twilight dimmers, which are light blocking. And since it's so hot and sunny there, would those be of interest to his customers? So because I found out what that they're trying to block the heat in the sun it led me to tell them about one of our products that can at least block the sun so it led to you know letting him know and he had no idea we had those so he's wanted some samples very good very good uh anybody else have any ideas how we can probe into specialties okay who are you using now? What do we, when we ask that question, what are we trying to uncover? A pain point that they have with their current provider. Yep. Yeah. Well, but we have to find out who it is first. Yeah. <laughs> it kind of tells you too, but who they're using will kind of give you an idea of what price point they're buying. Uh, well, I mean, once you kind of know these, these uh, are competitors you'll know, are they buying if fabrics that are similar to what we have? Are they buying Scalamandre? Are they buying, you know, um, it kind of puts them in a, a, a category. Okay. Yeah. If they're buying Scalamandre, they're buying, um, Fortuny. yeah. And Kravit, you know, the Kravit, um, I'm trying to think of one of their high ends line. I'm going blank, but it just kind of lets us know if they're even the kind of the ideal customer for us. If they're selling a lot of high end product, they may not be the right type of customer right it, you know if they're in uh, they're in on laguna beach carol or uh, <laughs> newport beach you know in a, a 12 20 million dollar home it uh that's 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 one designer we'd love to have their business but i don't know that we carry their product right right uh but if they're in anaheim that's a that's a whole nother story <laughs> um all right so uh, thank you. You guys are doing great. What I'd like to be able to do is, is Carol, I'm going to use you as, uh, yeah, I know you're lucky. <laughs> um, uh, Carol, Carol, I want you to play the role that you are. Kathy, I want you to be a prospect. <sighs> okay. All right. And here's the, and, and listen, you're going to, you're going to do fine, Carol, cause you're very practiced at this, but I want to make sure that everybody understands that you've seen 
and heard how this flows. It's question, 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 probe, 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 make notes, uh, repeat back to them what you heard, and then offer solution. Okay. All right. So that uh, I'll just do it one more time. Questions, questions, questions. Repeat back to them. Offer solution. Okay, Kathy. Are you ready? I guess. <laughs> Hi, Kathy. How are you today? I'm great, Carol. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for um, taking a few, well, about, hopefully this will be about 15, 20 minutes out of your day. And I told you that I wanted to set aside some time that I could get to know you a little bit better. And sure. then um, hopefully... Uh, tell you um, some new things that RM Coco has that might be of interest to you. Okay. Yeah, I'm really good? busy. Yeah, I'm really busy. So I know. Right I on know. Time, so. uh, uh, yeah, I won't take up too much more than that. Um, okay. I was wondering, what kind of thing? <clears throat> what kind of uh, products are your specialty? What are you guys doing in Anaheim that's <laughs> kind of uh, popular now? What do you seem to be doing more than anything? Well, they don't let me put curtains up at the beach. So, um, um, <laughs> um, I, you know, we do a lot of, um, we don't do a lot of soft window treatments. Um, we do mm -hmm. some um, more for residential than commercial, but we do mm -hmm. um, a, a few. Um, and, it, you know, for us, it's really about um, depending on where they're at, um, whether they were kind of in the trend for us is really not a lot of patterns. Um, mm -hmm. So, so a lot of solids. Just solid, solid colors. colors. Mm -hmm. solid yeah, colors. and I, you know, I looked on your website and I noticed that in your your portfolio, the pictures that you have, there's a lot of um, neutrals, just a mm -hmm. lot like soft whites and taupes, and there's some um, maybe a few grays. And I, I've noticed that in a lot of different designers out in California, that that's what they're focusing on, at least on their websites. Do you feel that's the same for you? Is that, is that the trend? Yeah, I think so. I mean, uh, I don't know if it's because people like to keep, you know, keep it from that softer, cooler mm -hmm. tones helps to keep you not, not feel so hot because we're always yeah. warmer in California. So Yeah, it does look so nice. I mean, it's just a very neutral, uh, cool looking decor in the rooms that mm -hmm. you've done it, at, at least. You said you're not doing a lot of soft window treatments. Um, and I've heard that from other designers as well. Do you like... Can you give me a percentage? Is it 25% soft window treatments? Is it 10%? Um, I think it's hard to tell. Um, you know, I think um, depending on the client is really about it's Sometimes it's about the um, demographic of the particular client. You know, is it a okay. younger couple versus an mm -hmm. older couple? So it just kind of depends. Okay. Yeah, some of the other designers in your area that I've talked to, they're all saying about 20 25% of their businesses, the soft window treatments. And then um, they're really doing a lot of shutters and blinds is more, is more where people are going, especially younger, the older. Um, do you notice that the older people are, are still gravitating toward the drapes? Yeah, we're, we're a little old fashioned. So we like to, those, it takes us a few years to get with the new trend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so, um, do you use ever order decorative hardware from us? Um, you know, we have before, um, not very often. I'm, I'm not really sure uh, all of the hardware that you guys have available. Okay. Well, that will be one thing that I think um, I can send you some information on our hardware and what's available. And we have a, um, a product or a line of products called Coco Deco that seems to be very, very popular, especially in your area. Um, Isn't there some new motor, some kind of motorized stuff that is yeah. out there now for that stuff? Okay. Yeah. That's and that's not very techy, but I've heard that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, some of them come with, you know, remote control so you can sit on your couch and open and close your drapes if that's what you like to do. <laughs> well, it's all about playing with some new toys sometimes, right? Yeah, we have stuff like that. And, um, and, you, and especially I've heard from some other designers out there that they have a lot of bigger windows and a lot of um, and you know, beautiful scenery with the ocean or the mountains. And people like to have that motorized because they can't reach the 
you know, they can't, they don't want to call. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. (laughs) So um, I know you said it's a smaller number of, or a smaller percentage of soft drapery treatments that you're doing now, but when you do a soft drapery drapery treatment, um, who is your vendor for fabrics? Um, You know, we use a couple different ones depending on, um, you know, our clients are usually, um, we, our budgets for our clients are a little bit um, not, extremely high so we're Mm -hmm. kind of in the moderate eight range on our budget with our clients okay so uh what where are you ordering from that you're finding moderate priced fabrics um you know probably Kravit a lot but um not really in anything in particular it depending like i said on what their budget is okay all right and i'm i'm looking at your account with us your account information and uh it looks like you have uh, just ten of our sample books. Is that correct? Um, you know, I don't. Do you use even, our sample books? Um, I don't even know where they are. <laughs> okay, but I'm sure they're around here somewhere. If you're telling me they're here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I, I was looking in a couple of the ones that you have, wherever they are, in your <laughs> shop. Um, look like they're outdated, and so oh. I'll definitely be sending you um, an email with uh those books that are outdated and that way you know you can you can pull them or at least if if you're going to use them you'll know that maybe some of the stuff is limited stock okay so are they I'll all be, outdated or do you no, know no no just a couple of them do you know which ones are outdated so i know when i'm looking at them can you send me can you let yeah me know? yeah i'm going to send you that in an email a okay. complete list of of anything you have that's outdated so okay. we can get that cleaned up for you and hopefully you can find them okay great thanks so, um, how long have you been in business, Kathy? Oh, probably a good 20 years. Been doing wow. That. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, what got you started in this? Um, you know, I thought I was good at interior design at home, so that's probably how I started into it. Oh, know? yeah. So, so did the you... interior designer wannabe, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> doing Doing your friends' houses and stuff like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they would say, what a good job, and they probably lied to me, and so I said, oh. <laughs> Oh, maybe I can do this for a living. <laughs> I don't think they, they must not have been lying because I don't think you'd be in business for 20 years if you didn't know what you were doing. Oh, good point. So, Thank yeah. You. <laughs> so that's awesome. Um, yeah, I'm like stuck. <laughs> good job, Carol. That's good job. You did great. Oh, my God. Talk about putting me on the spot. <laughs> you, were, you were trying to get to the next step and not sure where you that's how that goes. Uh, okay. Kathy, thanks for sharing all that with me. Let me just make sure I heard everything. Uh, you've been in business for 20 years. Uh, you, you started as an amateur and now you're professional. Your 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 sample books with us are a little outdated. I need to get those um, uh, updated or uh, um, uh, sent out to you. Uh, here's some of the trends you're seeing. Is it, Did I get all that right? Yeah, I think so. All right. So do that, Carol. Oh, actually do it. Okay. <laughs> so you're not done with me yet, Carol. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Okay. <laughs> so um, just to wrap things up, because I know you're super busy and I don't want to take up too much of your time. Um, it sounds like to me that um, you're doing about mm, maybe 20, 25% soft window treatments for your clients. But you're saying there are a lot of them are going toward harder window treatments. Um, and when um, you do order a fabric you're you like Kravitz Mm -hmm. seems like where you know what you like um and that your trends in your area are soft whites and neutrals and very calming colors and I also um heard that you don't really use our books that much it sounds like right and that um we need to get you a list of the two or three books that you do have somewhere <laughs> that are outdated. So at least yeah. when you do use them and um, is that about right? Yeah. I mean, it sounds like you have um, a more updated book, so I'd love to maybe see something else that's available. Yeah. And um, it sounds like sending you a bunch of patterns, material, you know, fabrics with patterns and bright colors probably isn't going to be a good idea from what yeah, you Yeah, I don't said. think we'd use those very much. Yeah, that's a great point. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So it'll be mostly um, neutrals and solids. Yeah. Right. Perfect. 
Okay, great. great. And uh, I'm going to get that email to you, and um, we will go from there. Do you know how quickly you can get that? Because I do have a couple um, projects coming up that you know might be interested in some of the things you have. Yeah, I'm, an email shouldn't take long at all. I'll get as soon as we're done. I'll get all that out to you, all the email information out to you, and also um, want to send out. From what you said, I I believe this might be a good product for you to look at. Just from okay. the things we talked about, is our uh, quick ship panel program. Okay. And that is all um, solids, and so I think it's an easy way to get um, panels made. They look um, custom; they're custom panels, but they're they're an easy way to get them made by our workroom and shipped out and get them to you in a very uh, short amount of time. Oh, so we'll I didn't understand you what well. you meant by a panel program. I'm sorry. So, <laughs> that's okay. So, um, so a panel program means that they, you guys, will make them for us. Is yes. Okay. Yes. Great to know. Okay. All right, and I'll get all this sent out to you, and then um, I'll be checking in with you um, in a week or two after you've gotten these emails and the information to see if you have any questions. That sounds great. Okay, thanks. Bye. Good job, good Bye. Good job Carol. Oh. Right. Yeah, good job, Carol. I want to put this a, a little bit of polish on that last part. Yeah, I know. Well, no, and, and, it's just, and it's just a little bit of a, um, a tweak. Mm -hmm. it, is say, listen, I'd like to follow back up with you. Um, let me check back with you on a week. What, what day of the week is best with you? Okay. Uh, Wednesdays are good. Okay. Mornings or afternoons? Afternoon. Mm -hmm. uh, let's look at Wednesday the 7th. Uh, Two o'clock? Does that sound good? I'd like to send you a calendar invite. So we mm -hmm. both set aside the time and make sure this happens. Okay. Get some skin in the game, at least with a calendar invite. Okay. All right. But yeah. you did that so well. <laughs> right. You really did. Uh, well, my brain just completely froze. I'll just well, that tell you that right now. On stage. That yeah. <laughs> and, but I, 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 that's one of the, the better role plays I've ever seen. Thank you, Kathy, <laughs> for being such a, a real <laughs> customer. And Carol, thank you for, thank you. for being a ball and told again. Um, and what I'd like to do now, because that was exactly the pattern. That was step by step. She asked okay. the questions. She built some bond there. Uh, she recapped what she heard. And she said, okay, I'm going to send you some, uh, some um, uh, samples. I'm going to do this. I'm going to send you this email. And then she set the next step, which is the follow-up. You're, you're not always going to make a sale. Rarely you're going to make a sale on the spot. But, and you shouldn't expect to. It's getting to that next step. It's, it's getting to talk to them again, and it's critical. And the reason why I put the polish on it at the end is get a date and a time and a commitment that they're going to talk to you again. Don't leave that with any level of ambiguity. All right? Mm -hmm. So, Leslie, I'm going to turn to you, and don't get that look of fright on your face. <laughs> but... Um, <sighs> When, when you saw that interaction, which again, Carol, really good. Um, when you saw that, what did you learn from that? What is a takeaway that you said, uh, that's what I need to do differently? Um, not, I mean, I don't know if I, because I feel like Carol and I have the same questioning way about how we're talking to our customers and um i mean i definitely agree with the at the end trying to get a confirmed time to recap with them i typically like for instance i did we did this uh prospecting blitz last week and i talked to two people and i sent them both emails and i said i will follow up with you next week so i didn't actually set a time but um you know, I, I think I was still nervous about talking to them because I, it's hard for me to understand quickly what direction to go to ask them because, you know, if I've looked at their website, I kind of know that they have, that they're a fabric shop or an interior design shop and to cold call someone and try to get as much information in a two minute phone call as I can so that they will talk to me again um, was 
interesting, I guess. And so I didn't get a confirmed time. They were just like, oh, yeah, just send me an email with what you have, and I'll look at it. And one person did, and one person didn't. And the person who didn't said, I just don't have time. Call me back another time. And so I said, well, how about 30 days? Because I've heard Carol say that. And she said, yeah, I mean, sure. <laughs> so it wasn't like a confirm. Yeah. And, and, and let me just, and I, I want to be um, uh, honest with you. If they're giving you that, you've missed something, right? right. Yeah. If, if you gain their interest, they're going to want to talk to you again. And so if you're getting that a lot, you, you need Kathy to, or maybe somebody else to listen to some of those conversations and see where you're, you may be missing a step or missing a question or something you can add in there to get that hook into them so that they want to talk to you again. I think my biggest uh, roadblock right now is the literal fact that everyone that I've spoken to in this industry is so busy. So I feel like I'm infringing on their time. And so when I call them and I start off with, hey, you know, I'm uh, the rep for this territory for this product. And I give my little 30 second elevator speech about how we've been in business for 50 years. And here's what we offer. I'm thinking to myself, they're like, standing at their counter, not listening to me. And how what am I doing to do a firework as I'm starting the performance, I guess. Okay. All right. And um, uh, so it may be that that initial elevator speech that may not be getting the hook into them soon enough. You may need to uh, uh, reserve that for a minute or two into the conversation, get them talking about themselves first. And so it could, you just could be a little mm -hmm. out of order on that. Okay. All right. And Kathy, I'm sure you're going to do some observations and be able to, uh, to help her, you know, hone that in a little bit because that is frustrating for Leslie. I know. Uh, and I've been there and I know how that feels. And it's like, you know, every phone call and it's, it's people are busy. No doubt. You know, I work with a couple of designers out here. They are, they're having the best years of their careers. Uh, so I know how busy they are, but, We've got to find a way to get them to pause one second so we can help them. So Kathy, yeah. you'll help her with that. Yeah, we, um, we actually, um, I actually, we're doing something a little bit different with monitoring um, as opposed to not that I'm not going to go out and monitor calls, but I'm having them give me calls they're struggling with. So you get done with the customer, give me the call, I'll get the recording. And we actually did some prospecting that we played together and just um, kind of critiqued each other on what we could do better, what we heard good out of those calls. So I think that helped. And we'll continue to do stuff like that. Yeah. So, and, and Leslie, what I, I, I think I heard again is you can't get to this discovery because nobody will spend enough time right. with you. Right. And we, we got to help. As far you. as prospecting. Yes. Yeah. 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 The, yeah. As from a prospecting standpoint, that's, that's where the additional business mm -hmm. will come from. Right. Okay. Uh, so we need to help you with that a little mm -hmm. bit. Yep. Okay. Thanks for sharing that. And, and then, um, uh, Sarah, let's, uh, um, what was something you heard in that interaction that you said, I need to, I need to do more of that, or I need to stop doing that, or I need to get my order straight. What, what did you learn from that interaction? The one between Carol and Kathy. Um, uh, hmm. Well, let's do this. Let's do this. All right. I'm going to put you on the spot. Go for it. Kathy's going to be the customer again. Oh, God. <laughs> okay. Right. And I want you to go through those same three discovery questions, which were trends, uh, what's your specialty, and who are you using now? Uh, Kathy's such a great customer. I, I, plays that role naturally. I want you to go through your process because I'd love to hear it because we could probably all learn from that. And uh, you've been working on this whole discovery process. So have at it. Call up Kathy, your customer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good morning, Kathy. How are you doing today? I'm great. How are you? Oh, I'm not bad. 
thank you for taking time today to talk to me. I love to learn a little bit more about you and your business. Could you tell me a little bit about your business and how many, how long have you been in business for? Um, so um, we're a pretty new company. We, um, we've only started doing this maybe five, 10 years ago. So we're pretty new at what we do. And what do you do? Um, we do a lot of interior design stuff. We do, um, you know, we do, you know, room design. We do, um, we do some windows. We do, um, we do a little bit of, um, we, you know, I have somebody who kind of creates some of our uh, draperies. They, um, they fabricate them. We have one person here that helps with that. So we're kind of a small little place trying to get up, get up to speed. Okay. So you, I heard you say that you do some window treatments. Are they hard or soft? Would you say that you do more soft versus hard or vice versa? Um, we do, I would say it's about um, half and half. There's some people who are very adamant about hard and then we have some that still love the soft window treatment. Okay, well, that's good. So I also heard you say that you have a local workroom. How far back are they on their, uh, on their lead times? Are they pretty far back or are they pretty... Um, you know, easy, like four weeks. I heard recently that, you know, from another person in your area that, you know, their lead time for their workroom is like six to eight weeks or even longer sometimes. Yeah. So we, we actually, because I'm so small, I have literally a person that does fabricating here. So she can only do them so fast as a one person shop. Yeah, I, oh, I understand that. That can be kind yeah. of hard sometimes. And you only, you know, well, we do have a workroom here. It's a national workroom. And we're only four to six weeks, so we're a little bit fit, a little bit, you know, faster than some of them I've heard about. Just wanted to give you in there, if you've never used it before, we also give a 20% discount on oh, your, okay. yeah, so if you've never used it before, if you're interested in that, we can do that as well. So um, I heard you're, you're new to the game, so if, when you do the window treatments, who do you go to for your fabric choices? Um, you know, um, we don't have a specific um, one we go to. I'm trying to explore a little bit different companies to see which one I like better. Could you so tell done. me who they are? I'm just um, curious. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, throw me on the spot with names there. You guys don't know. <laughs> 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 Sorry, <gonna> go. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, here, I'll give you a couple that may be one. Uh, fabric we use a little bit. Of, Is and you one that you've used before too? I'm sorry, who? Greenhouse, I've heard that a lot lately. Um, I think we did try them once before, yeah. Okay. Are you having any issues with any of them that you can come across right now? Um, no, not really. I mean, um, you know, I, I've had some trouble with, um, I had trouble with a couple things that were on back order. So, I, I, you know, I'm sure that's standard um, with the industry, things sitting on back order. Yeah, I mean, it could be. But, you know, do you happen to know which orders or which fabrics you've chose that have been back ordered? Maybe I can, you know, look up and see if we have a similar fabric or even the same one. Yeah, it was, um, it was some type of linen. I don't remember the exact fabric off the top of my head. Okay, well, I can shoot you an email, and then maybe you can have a little more time to, you know, search that for me, and I can try to help you with that. Okay, yeah, I mean, it, um, do you have, um, do you have fabrics, do you, do you have fabrics that other people carry, or? Sometimes we do. I mean, we do have exclusive just for RM Coco. But then we do have, you know, there's some in the industry that you share with others that aren't exclusive to everybody. And so they're open fabric choices. So we can see, and if, if I don't have what you're looking for or what is backward from them, I can try my best to find ones that are similar or okay. even so close that you can't even tell the difference, you know? They may be <laughs> different fabric, but the same pattern, same color, just not the same exact fabric. Okay, so well. I just do as much as I can for you. Yeah, it's going to have to be really close because this is a really picky customer. She is like set on this one pattern. <laughs> I understand that. I get that. I do my myself. Like you like one thing and you just can't stray from it. I get it. I understand. Yeah, exactly. All right. So what would you, you said that you do um, a lot of different projects. What would you consider is your specialty? Um, you, you know, um, our, you know, she does a good job on um, swags and stuff. So we have a couple requests for those, but um, you know, I would say the easy specialty is just some um, panels. Oh, well, we have a quick panel program here at RM Coco. Have you ever, I can send you any information on, in an email about that if you'd hey, like. Hey, Sarah, I want to pause you a second. Sure, go you're for make, it. You're making the classic misstep, all right? Oh, yeah. And almost everybody in their first role play does this. Okay. Who can tell her what the misstep is? Answering the questions as she's going. Right. Okay. Hold off on those. All right. 
uh, you want you want to gather that information, make notes because the next step is let me tell you what I heard. Now I'm going to tell you what I can do. Okay. Because and, and remember, empathy, 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 expertise. You're showing your expertise too soon. Okay. All right. And I'm telling you, your your success rate will go up if you'll hold off on that just for a few minutes, get that third critical step in, which is thanks for sharing all that. Let me uh, make sure I heard you right. You're, you know, you're doing this, you're doing this, you're doing this. Did I get that right? Yeah. Well, here's what I can do. I can send you this. I can do that. I will do this. How's that sound? Make sense? Yeah. Okay. So let's go back. Let's abbreviate that a little bit. Hold off on solving the problems as you hear them or offering any kind of solutions as you hear that. Just ask the questions. What I'm primarily wanting to hear from you is that recap, is that paraphrasing back to them what you heard, and then you can go to those solutions. Okay. All right. So let's yeah. do this one more time. <laughs> well, and I'm going to add some feedback to you too, Sarah. Um, as a customer, because you were trying to solve it all the time, I felt like I couldn't keep talking about what I was trying to tell you, if that makes sense. So by, by the, doing what Vaughn suggested, I think you'll get even more information from the customer. Sure. Okay. okay. So, <laughs> so, uh, just ask her two of those questions, repeat it back, and then offer the solution. Okay. Um, so I heard you say you have a lot of different projects. What, is, what would you consider as your specialty? Um, I would say um, our panels, we, we have somebody that my person that does our, our fabrication. She <laughs> loves to do those panels probably because they're the simplest sewing pattern. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, go ahead. And who are you using now? Who's your, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So when you have those um, fabricated and made, who do you who do you think you um, gravitate towards? What vendor? Do you mean for the fabric or for the services? The uh, the, well, you're having them made the panel for, the panels made by somebody. What fabric and what vendor do you gravitate towards for those? Oh, I see what you're saying. Um, it varies. Um, uh, we've tried a couple different ones. We've tried um, mostly. We've used Fabricut a couple times. Okay. So are you happy with, you know, fabric cut and what they're giving you? Um, I think sometimes um, I've got a couple projects, in fact, right now that um, I have some fabric on back order that I'm still waiting for. So, I, uh, you know, the jury's still out on whether we get those in time to finish my, my project. Okay. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. That's never fun. Okay. So I've heard that you, you really uh, like to get fabricated for panels and that you use fabric cut mostly for your projects and you're not happy so happy with the idea that there a lot of your fabrics are being back on back order well we actually offer a panel program here at rm coco it's a custom um panel program at a you know a discounted rate basically i'm gonna and pause you again i'm gonna pause you again just one little simple but critical thing you need to do in that transition is thanks for sharing that with me do you mind if I offer you a couple ideas? Thanks for being my guinea pig, Sarah. Hey, no problem. I don't mind it. I got tough skin. Yes, you do. <laughs> All right. So yeah, that, that little transition right there uh, is so important to, uh, to the relationship and the barrier of trust being removed. Is that asking permission? So take it, just, at, just do it the way it feels natural to you and then go into, here's what I'd like to do. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Kathy, for you know, sharing that information with me. Um, is it all right if I you know, talk to you about some of the things that we offer that may help with those, some of those um, concerns that you have? Perfect. Um, yeah, I mean, how much time will it take to go through that? Because uh, I'm so to, busy. One to, one to two minutes max. I can do it really quickly. And then whatever I don't, you know, whatever you, if you don't have enough time, I can always shoot you all the information in an email. 
Okay. Yeah, I probably could squeeze in a little bit of time for that. Okay, good. Well, thank you again for taking some time just for me to talk about this with you. Um, so I heard that you said that you, you, you like to get your panels done by your local lady. And then that you are a little concerned on some of the fabrics that are being backordered through Fabric Cut. Um, I will say that we do offer a panel program here at R and Coco. It's custom made panels at a, a discounted rate price. Um, we have over 40 fabric choices. Um, I mean, the, the list is endless for our panel program. Um, and they're fabricated at our workroom and shipped to you. Um, so if you're having a little hard time on the lead time for those, they're really quick and easy. Um, as for the backordered fabrics, I can do as much as I possibly can to make sure that, you know, we don't have as many backordered fabrics maybe. And, you know, we can always look to see if we have similar or the exact same fabric that you're using that they may have backordered, but we may have it in stock and ship it, to, it may, you know, have ship it to your local lady for you. Okay, I, I'm not sure what the benefit would be for the panel program since I already have somebody here that does panels for me. Is there something I'm missing with that? Well, no, I, maybe her lead time is just too late. So maybe we can get them out to you faster. Sorry, I have Kevin here asking me a question. Well, you're fine. Hi, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> No, no worries. All right. Well, um, it was really great talking to you. Um, how about we schedule a follow-up call? Would a week or two be okay with you? Um, yeah, I think so. I could probably um, do a quick follow-up. Okay. Would in the middle of the week or towards the end of the week work for you? Oh, end of the weeks are crazy busy for me. So probably more the middle of the week would be better. Okay. Would Tuesday work? Uh, yeah, that could work. Morning or evening or morning or afternoon? <laughs> Not evening. <laughs> I know, sorry. <laughs> um, you know, I'm a better morning person. Let's do it in the morning and because it gets crazy in my life. Gets, it, everything gets taken away. So let's do morning. I think that'd be okay, better. Okay, how is Tuesday, November 3rd at uh, 10 o'clock work for you? That sounds good. All right. Well, I will send you an email with that information on it. And I will look forward to talking to you on November 3rd at 10 a.m. Okay, sounds great. Thanks. All right, bye-bye. <laughs> All right, now... Great job, Sarah. Now, so after you did it that way, what 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 are you going to commit to go work mm -hmm. on and and start making them a little more habitual? Definitely listening. Apparently, I talk too much. I've always said that I could talk for hours, which is totally true. Um, but I guess I have to work on my listening skills for sure. <laughs> All right. And, and, and all of you, don't forget, this is a very scientifically and honestly, scientifically from a neuroscience standpoint, design process. You've got to follow these steps specifically. And if you do, success rises. If you don't, you're leaving it to chance. And I'm, I know it works. Uh, you know, uh, Carol has shared that she sees how it works. If, if you go, you know, listen, 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 ask, 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 repeat back, offer a solution. If you follow that specific, a hold back, uh, um, as, as Sarah just indicated, hold back on, on, on trying to fix things as you hear it until the end. And it may sound subtle, it may even sound silly to you, but that's the neuroscience that's been designed around this this, this collaborative selling, this consultative selling, this spin selling, as he spoke, it's, it's all the same modern way of people selling themselves based on your, your value that you're offering them. Make sense? So thank you so much, uh, especially... Carol and Sarah for putting themselves on the line like that. Uh, Kathy, you make an amazing customer. Uh, let's hope you never get promoted to one. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure that's a promotion either. So, <laughs> um, so um, Kathy, when as as you've heard all this, uh, as their supervisors, their boss, what what do you think you and the team need to go work on to get this thing dialed in? Um, well, I think it's, um, I mean, I think some of the things we've already been trying to do is, you know, really listen to calls um, and really just tear apart the calls. Stop it, you know, talk about it. 
Um, so I think that's huge because, and I think when we, it's funny when we did that last week, they all hate hearing themselves, right? But that's normal um, right. for that. But I think that you get some good um, feedback on what you, how you heard, not only what you said, but how you said it and was it smooth. And so, um, you know, role playing is obviously very different because you might not be as smooth as you would be normally anyway. Um, so it's really just keep reiterating those things and just get yourself to where you feel comfortable with what you're talking about. Yeah. And in, and in the, the realm of learning and knowledge, uh, these role plays are necessary. So it's, it's like my father said to me when I started complaining about going to ball practice, he said, you know, I hate practicing. And he says, well, practice may suck, but not being good at something sucks worse. Um, and that's where practice, practice and doing it in a safe environment like this, uh, although it's your peers, the more I can practice here when I actually am taking live fire, I'm going to be that much better at it. I'm going to be that much more confident. Right. Now, there's the variables that I can't control because every phone call is going to be different. But as you, as you then start applying that kinesthetic knowledge to all the future calls you go through, you'll keep getting better and better and better, but you've got it. You've got to follow the process. Right. I think the other piece is collaboration is huge. So I've been doing that a long time with my team meetings is collaborating on conversations that you've had that what was a good one, what was a not so good one and how, or, you know, and it's the, Oh, I said this one time and that worked better. So I think that's huge. And I already, it's fun, I love it. Cause I already see these guys doing it. Even in this call today, they're collaborating together on things that they're doing. They're doing a great job with that. All right. So when we, I'm, I'm going to make a, 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 a note for a follow-up. When we talk again in about a month at our next group training, uh, I want to spend about 15 or 20 minutes of that training understanding what you guys have discovered, what you've practiced, what you feel like you're improving on. Kathy, don't let me forget that. I'm going to make a note, but don't let me forget. <laughs> okay. Uh, and because I'm telling you, there is nothing else that's going to help you sell more product than what we learned today. And the better you get at it, the better your sales are going to be and the happier he's going to be, Kathy's going to be, and especially Michael Carr is going to be. Um, <laughs> because that's that we're we're here to produce. And it's this is a the simplest, lowest cost, with the least amount of resistance kind of approach that you could possibly get. What questions does anybody have? Don't have any. All right. Well, they're afraid I'll make them role play. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All well, right. Grace, Grace isn't under her desk yet, so. <laughs> no eye contact. No eye contact. Don't look at me. Uh, <laughs> we immediately go, oh, look at the time. Uh, so I'll see. I'll talk to you guys all soon. Carol, I look forward to see. I think I've got some training classes coming up that are special for you and some other new folks uh, coming up shortly. Uh, Michael, thanks for joining us today. Heath, any last words before we we, we cut out of here? No, I, I think I agree with you, Vaughn. This is an important um, important training session, and I would just add from a from a, a mental standpoint as we're making these calls. I know it's we take a lot of times our own experience of what we feel when someone calls us and trying to make a sales call, but we have to have a, a positive image of ourselves as salespeople and that we don't need to be seeing ourselves as bothering someone, that, but we're bringing tremendous value to them. And it's so valuable that they need to hear this. And that will change your perspective and help you with that apprehensiveness that you feel and making that call and thinking that you're interrupting somebody's day, because the fact of the matter is you are interrupting somebody's day, but what you have to tell them is so powerful and so beneficial to their business. You do it. You do it every day with everything else. You know, maybe it's the best spice latte pumpkin drink from Starbucks and you're bugging everybody telling them they need to go and have it. You don't have any apprehension about that because you're passionate about it and you want to tell people about it. Well, that's what we need to be doing as salespeople. Yeah, and I'll, and I'll add to what Heath just said. The positivity bring, brings those – it helps you to get to those numbers you're trying to get to. I know you're all trying to get to more calls every day and trying to get to those numbers. The more positive that you are, the more comfortable you are. 
the, the more you're just going to go in and start diving in and start making those phone calls and making good phone calls, having good conversations with people. Yep. Can I throw something in there? Oh, please. I know most of the people here do this because I hear them and, and they're on the phone laughing with their customers. But if you smile while you're talking, it projects in your voice and, and someone on the other end of the phone can, like I have a little thing on my wall that has their 30 second elevator speech and I put a sign on the top of it that said smile. And it just kind of reminds you if you're, if you're on the phone and you're smiling, it, it, it projects your voice differently, even though you're sitting there by yourself, you just do it. <laughs> yeah. A hundred percent. Right. Thank you for bringing that up. Really good point. I think it, I can, it gives a comfort level to the people at the other end. You bet. Well, can I add a, I'm happy. <clears throat> Vaughn, can I add a few things? Absolutely. And I'm, I'm sorry I missed a couple of things. I was working on some printing. Well, things. you missed our big role play event? I, I watched Why? part of that. But <laughs> I think the, the, the more we can give you um, um, our benefits, our value proposition in a very succinct way, I think the more confident you can be in, I notice like in the role playing, like, oh, I buy fabric from Fabric Hut or I, I have, um, um, I have back orders. Well, you need to have like a very quick talking point and say, well, our designer library has 42 programs with over 2000 SKUs and we're 98% in stock. I would, you know, that's available now in a carry case for, $149. And, you know, and that has, you know, so if you have very like, or um, just, you know, each one of their pain points, if you have a solution for it, that's very prepared, that you can come right back and say, I have a solution for that. And I can send you information on that. Or would you like to go forward with something? I think that's, that could be very helpful rather than if they have a pain point, if you don't really have anything to say back, then it's kind of, uh, it's a lost opportunity. Yeah. And, and thanks for bringing that up, Mike, because I, at some point and I, and I didn't get back to it. Um, I forget, and I forget which role play it was, but uh, they're talking about back orders and it's eight weeks out. And it's like, I, I wrote down how many rolls of fabric do we have in our warehouse right now? I, I, that's something that and now you just answered yeah. that, right? Uh, that we're 98% in stock. We have this many, you know, uh, that's powerful, right? That, that shows from an expertise standpoint that you can handle it. So thanks for bringing that up, Mike. Great point. Uh, Kathy, last shot. Anything else you want to say before we get off? I don't think so. I think that um, I, I, think that you guys are doing um you're progressing very well and um um i think that you're i think you're going to all end up to be really good sales reps from all this training and um you know working together yeah great job you guys are, are just fantastic work with thanks mm -hmm. thanks for allowing me into your life for a couple hours a month um kathy and heath we'll we'll talk soon mike and uh if you need anything in the meantime you guys know how to get me thank you Vaughn. Right. thank you right. Have a great rest of your week. You, you too. too. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.